and I hope you enjoy it. Go ahead, Bob. When we talk about what we can learn from the past, there are two pieces to consider. First, there is inheritance, which is what is handed down to us whether we want it or not. But there is also heritage, what we choose to take away from the past. Heritage is culture, memories and emotions. It's the smell of grandma's bread baking, the feelings we share walking into this amazing theater. I'm a media preservationist. That means I take old family memories and historical items from analog formats like film negatives, videotapes, and audio reels to create digital files that can be shared and enjoyed in our computers and TVs, our social media, and our phones. Many of the projects that I take on have been inherited from older generations. This is usually what it looks like. Mom or grandma has passed away or moved out of the old home, and the grandkids are left with boxes of film reels and videotapes that they have no idea how to even use, let alone share with the family. That's my box. <laughs> and so the boxes become a burden. They get stashed away for years or even decades. They cause conflict between family members. I picked up these bins from a storage unit in Billings while an estate lawyer looked over my shoulder like this because the siblings were at war over who got dad's photos and slides. Heritage is different. It's the intangible things we take from the past, the meaning and feelings. We scanned and transcribed a series of love letters a customer's grandparents had exchanged when they were courting in the 1940s. Physically, it's just a stack of paper, but every bit of four generations of this family's history grows from this correspondence. Heritage is extremely personal and might not make sense to outsiders. I had a video transfer where every tape was basically the same. Someone set a camera on the riverbank and let it roll for two hours while people fished. There was very little talking, very little action. Most of it was out of focus. <laughs> the customer brought a second batch of tapes and I suggested maybe it wasn't worth the cost to transfer more of the same stuff. And she said, Seth, all that fishing and chatting was my husband in a nutshell. He passed away last year. I take those DVDs up to my cabin and just let them play, and we hang out. That was the last time I questioned whether a job was worth it. Sometimes the value of the work is obvious right away. A customer brought in a large box of reel-to-reel -reel tapes with classical music recordings. They hadn't been heard in years, but she wanted them done as soon as possible. Her husband was in hospice and had been asking for his music. We transferred as many reels as we could each week and handed them to her, and she brought a CD player to his room. Other memories are collective. I see this every couple months. There's a photo or a slide or a home movie where somebody tried to capture their TV screen during the first moon landing in 1969. <laughs> we take for granted the ability to share and relive memories all the time, but they had no idea when they would be able to relive this again. Uh, we think of oversharing our lives as something new, a social media thing, but raise your hand if you ever sat through an hour-long slideshow of a friend's vacation. <laughs> raise your hand if your dad ever spent the whole day at Disney World carrying around a VHS camera. <laughs> Sometimes, those boring family collections reveal important local history. In the middle of thousands of slides and snapshots, there were a dozen or so that were some of the first images taken after the big Hebgen quake in 1959. You can see there in the middle where the lake has overtaken the road. Uh, these had never been seen by anyone outside of the family and not seen at all in decades. Occasionally we get to do a little archaeology. You might recognize the Story Mansion from this aerial shot in the middle there. This is a survey that we digitized for the county. The negatives didn't have any dates. We did find some clues in the images. There was an unfinished section of interstate and the Holiday Inn was under construction, which pegged the date at 1968. We have worked with museums in the area to make history more accessible to the public. The Jefferson Valley Museum in Whitehall had microcassette recordings of interviews with the children of the original pioneers of that area. We digitized those tapes to MP3 files and also used software to transcribe searchable text documents from those conversations. We even see a little world history. This is from a customer whose relative was a World War I flying ace, and he was responsible for some of the first wartime aerial photography. The black mark through the middle there happened when a bullet passed through the plate as he was flying. This next is a little bit of world history personalized for one family. I was scanning a lot of um, documents and photos, and I had to wonder why there was a little pebble taped to this letter. Uh, but that stamp is written in German. The letter was mailed in 1990, and that pebble is a piece of the Berlin Wall. 
People often worry that the age or the low quality of their memories makes them not worth saving. The worst of all of my family's film reels is most dear to me. When I moved west, my dad said, son, don't take a picture of the first pronghorn that you see. There will be more, and they will be closer to the road. <laughs> 25 years later, I finally get that joke. <laughs> Truth be told, none of these reels look any good on our 70-inch 4K televisions. The value is in sharing them. This reel of my great-grandparents' anniversary is about more than the fashion choices. <laughs> Shared to a private YouTube page for free, it reached out and reconnected cousins, second cousins, great uncles that had been out of touch for 20 years. One of the most powerful things I see are how these memories get the older generation to open up. That's my grandpa on the right. He told us the story of his draft card coming in the mail the morning of his wedding. Great grandma got it and hid it in her dress pocket and she kept that secret to herself all day long. So if I can offer anything from my experience, I hope you'll be inst inspired to start these projects while the people who lived your family's stories are still here to tell them. Start thinking about what this generation has to offer the future. Will it be true heritage or just unfamiliar names on old photos? Heritage isn't just about the past. Working out your heritage is a tremendous opportunity to connect with our family and friends in the present, to reflect on our impact in the world. Thank you for listening.